<risos> e aí, Tinha? that you did. season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven. A time for planting and a time for reaping. A time for keeping and a time for discarding. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for embracing and a time to refrain from embracing. A time for slaying and a time for healing. A time for laughing and a time for weeping. A time for dancing and a time for wailing. A time for birthing and a time for dying. A time for speaking time for silence, a time for seeking, a time for losing. I want to start this by saying no one should ever have to write their child's eulogy. That should be a rule. <laughs> Not because no parent should pay that level of respect to their child, but because kids should just outlive parents. <laughs> that should be a rule. I was considering asking Jesus to make it one, but since Alyssa's worked so hard after her death to convince everyone that we're Jewish, I don't really know if he's currently taking my request. <laughs> Although I suppose he was Jewish, so there is that. All right, I digress. If you know me, you know that I cope with the serious by using humor. If you don't know me, well, I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to brace yourself for the eulogy that most people would have never written. Two weeks ago, I would have apologized for making you feel uncomfortable. Today, I know better. Today, I know that the one thing Alyssa taught me as she was leaving was that when we do things for the right reasons, that's ultimately what people remember. And if they choose to remember differently, that's their responsibility. See, I know some of you thinking that the concept of a mother getting up to do a eulogy for a young daughter is completely destined to end in tears. And also pretty unorthodox. But I think we got enough orthodox here. <laughs> However, I'm seven and a half years into being Alyssa's voice and it did not seem right to end that now. Trust me, I debated it for the sheer fact that the amount of pressure that comes with writing a eulogy for Alyssa was nearly enough to crush me. I nearly broke. I knew it needed to be written from a place of joy, and this soon into the grieving process, I'm a cluster of anger, frustration, and confusion. 
those are not emotions that should drive this day. So I took some deep breaths. I sobbed <laughs> some really good tears. And I hope what follows honors her in a way that makes her proud without keeping you here all freaking day. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why from the moment we needed to plan for today, it was so imperative for this to be about who Alyssa was instead of the fact she left us. Then I realized that that was so important because she hasn't left. Alyssa's body stopped functioning last Saturday morning at 3.30 a.m. But the reality is that the app body was not Alyssa. It was her shell. It was who she was. It never defined her. It was simply a way for her to attempt to blend in with the rest of us. Sadly, those attempts were futile. <laughs> Alyssa stood out from the beginning. She drew people in to her light. Not because of the things she wasn't, but because of the person she was from the moment she entered this world. Alyssa stands out in a crowd, not because of a pretty wheelchair, a pretty outfit, or a pretty face, even though she certainly had all three. Uh, Alyssa stands out because she laughs with her soul. She loves without judgment, and she holds people above things, although no person higher than her daddy. From the moment they met, the way they gazed at each other astounded me. I had never seen two people so in love. It was a love that came to both of them so easily, and watching it grow through the years has been one of my favorite parts of being Alyssa's mom. See, it's not that I think he loved her more. We just loved her differently. Neil loved her in a way that was blind to all of the challenges that she may eventually face. I was always so grateful that he loved her fully and completely for who she is and focuses purely on the present. It's something I've never really been good at. However, I am good at loving for her for who she is while still working hard to push forward and advocate. When we discovered Alyssa was going to battle against her shell a bit more than most, we never coped how people typically do. Alyssa wouldn't have allowed us to. Alyssa never took steps, but she led Neil and I down a path that we had never expected. And she brought so many other people along for the journey. On paper, she wasn't at all who I'd ever wanted, but she wound up being everything we needed. I knew Alyssa was amazing when she was physically here. I never doubted it. I'm not claiming perfect mother. <laughs> no one needs that kind of pressure. Trust me that there were days that I consulted with friends on whether it was normal to want to toss your child out of a window. <laughs> I was reassured that it was normal to want to do it, but if I actually started unlocking the window, it was time for call to help. <laughs> Luckily, Alyssa always knew just how far she could push me and not break me. And she knew that a good belly laugh would reset us both. I lived in what I thought was awe for seven and a half years. Person after person after person told Neil and I how lucky Alyssa was to have us as parents. And we reassured them every single time that we were the lucky ones. They'd roll their eyes and give us that, oh, come on, look, but we meant every word. If they stuck around long enough to bond with her, <laughs> they learned that we were right. <laughs> they learned that our little girl is a force to be reckoned with and that she'd find a way to draw out the best of them, even on the days they didn't think the best of them existed. It's her way. <laughs> there were days I felt like I'd let her down or I'd not done well enough by her and she'd find some little way to let me know I was doing okay. There were moments that I completely broke down and lost it. And I always took the time to come in and apologize. And she'd pucker up for kisses to let me know that it was okay. Really and truly, Alyssa's the kiddo who wants you to do the best you can each day and forgives you when your best just isn't as good as you wanted it to be. So as you go forth in your day to day, and you work on grieving the loss of her physical presence. It's our hope that what made Alyssa Alyssa can live on. When someone wrongs you and takes the time to say they are sorry, work on forgiving them. When someone forgets something you felt was important, work on forgiving them. When a stranger looks like they're having a hard day, smile in their direction. When a friend has had an impossible day, reach out and hold their hand. Do your best to wake and start each day happily. Not because of all the good things that happened yesterday, but for the simple fact that you're awake. Alyssa did that 
every single day for seven and a half years. And I will tell you, as someone who got to be there for the large majority of her days, I really, really do think she lived this life in the best way possible. So from here on out, when your day feels impossible and you don't think you are going to make it through, take a deep breath, force out a smile, a little bit of a giggle, and ask yourself, what would Alyssa do? I'm happy and I love you, mom and dad. 